Right, welcome to my video of Queen Street Mill in Burnley. It says here, it's the last remaining steam powered textile mill with boilers, engine and loom still working, built in 1894 as a workers cooperative commercial production, st commercial production stopped on the 12th of March 1982. It says it's working, but it's not today. And I don't think I can come back when it is working because it's on the other side of the country for me, this. But this is definitely one on my bucket list. Enjoy the video. You'll, uh, you'll hear my enthusiasm as we go round. I always wanted to come to this place since I've seen Fred Dibner's video on it. This is my sort of thing. Yeah. It's a clocking on machine. No idea. I don't know what to say. I've never seen it like this. We've got a tour at half past, so I should know more then. Blimey. Some workshop here. And these tracks on the floor. Reeds. I didn't see that. No, you were all right. Right, cheers. I didn't open the door. No, no. I've got I've, proof. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do a walk around and I'm just a bit delayed in doing my walk around. So it's Lovely. not you, don't worry. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
as this goods out are in. Yeah, look at that scales there. That's just been plonked there, I bet. This is goods out scales. Oh, look at that down there. I know where I can put this. Oh. What is it? Electric? Gas? Gas in it. Gas. Gas. Oh, anybody fancy a brew? It's a bit uh, seized. I'm at Queen Street Mill. Oh, what's that through there? Wow. <laughs> this is the piece de resistance. Wow, look at this, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. Who do we get in there? How do we get in there? How do we get in there? Right, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, look at this. Ain't that special? One, two, three, four, five, ten. Oh, right. Oh. Oh. Um, Cheers. It's all right. No worries. I'll just be careful. when it's actually running at the moment the steam engine isn't running because oh. um, wait, we're waiting for its inspection but when it does run which is we only run it um, when we run it it's only a few weekends a year um, and it drives these shafts here yeah. so these all turn have you been before no never it's amazing yeah that's so we would not see it running today no no because the engine's um okay. hasn't gone through its inspection um but we do when we do the tour can we go through there um I'm not sure, I'll have to see who's doing it. That'd be great, that. You know, seeing the engine's not the running. Engine, um, you, you will see that, you can go and see, you can go and have a look at the engine and the boiler house as well. Can you ask him if we can go just walk down there? <laughs> on the tour, on the half 12. You know, seeing the engine's not running. As a bit of compensation. Come with me. Oh, this light, natural light coming in. These gas eaters.
Oh, we're back at the cafe. Oh, I know my way around now. Blimey. Oh, we can go down here. Do as I was told. Look, there's no barriers to stop you going down there. I see no reason you can't walk down there. It's a bit daft. But it's council owned, you see, so health and safety's always on top. Why? Oh, that is some. Imagine all that running. Amazing. Right, so back through here now. I'm going to show you the engine house, quickly. That'd be a carding machine, won't it, that? No, cylinder sizing machine. Oh, I didn't show you that on the way in. Up we go. Oh, that's natural light coming in. Proper mill engine. Whoa. Nice and shiny. No oil. No oil in the oilers. Governor, the I don't think you're allowed down here. Peace. That will be the high pressure cylinder. And this will be the low pressure cylinder. And I'm going to stick my neck out here and call it a tandem. Like an oiling can. Two lights. All this lot here. Ooh, on, off. Yeah, so this, that's the steam valve store. That must be the high pressure. Cylinder. Oh, smashing, isn't it? Demonstration there of how a cylinder works. What's that? Another empty oil there. Oh, that, see, that puts oil into there. William Robertson, Nelson, Nelson, Lancashire, and two more oilers there. Well, what a smashing piece of kit, what a great place, if you're into that sort of thing, as I am. William Nelson, William Roberts and Sons Limited, Nelson. Robert 
Ross and Sons, Engineers and Millwrights Nelson. Well, we've had a good look at that. That's smashing. So that must be line shaft. Hey, um, where did the line shaft come off this then? Oh, look at them gears there. That go into that. So that line shaft must be here. That's your line shaft going straight through there. Boosh into that room where the mills are. Right, we're back at reception. I've shown you that. There's a painting here, but it's not very good. Uh, because of the lights. It's a good painting, don't get me wrong, but you, you know, the light's not very good. I think it is Queen Street Mill. You can't see. It's just a shame, that. But yeah, there's a picture there of the mill. Oil. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, what a place. Cafe down there as well. Cafe there. This one is King's Mill. This is Queen Street Mill. We're going in the boiler house. If we can get in. You give me different sets of keys for different uh, size of group. We might be. I don't know. No, it's working. Sometimes it's a smaller group. We're going to the boiler house itself, but uh, we're all right with that. Thank I must have only had one week to bits this morning while we've been fought. <laughs> right. So the powerhouse of the mill. This one came in in 1901. They were built in Hyde, in Cheshire, and they're called Lancashire boilers. They're called Lancashire boilers because they have two fire holes. Um, Lancashire boilers were not just used for cotton mills, textile mills. They were also used for ships, uh, printing, dyeing, all, all matter of uh, boilers. The um, alternative was the Cornish boiler, it tends to be used for the Cornish tin mines uh, in, in, uh, down in Cornwall. Um, this one no longer works, but at full capacity um, at, at the, in, the, in the 20th century, when there was even a huge demand for cotton, um, they installed the second boiler here. Um, they both were delivered by a traction engine with a, on a long cart. And the cows are having to put two traction engines on the back of the trailer to bring them up here up the sea coast from Birmingham, come all, all the way from Manchester. They didn't come by train, they came by, by road. Um, they did experiment by 
baffling what we call an automatic shut lock. And the idea was that the boiler line could throw cold into, into these two uh, uh, um, containers here, uh, and the, the boiler would be able to be powered uh, by steam to know exactly how much coal to put in. But it never really worked, it wasn't efficient. So we revert back to the traditional way of the boilerman actually uh, putting coal directly into the fires. You'll see a big, thick red pipe there that goes right up into the wall, and um, we'll see where that goes to in a few minutes. The boilerman was well paid. Um, even the managers of mills had to ask permission to go into the boiler house. Not that they want to do that too often for the temperatures uh, and uh, the the dust and so on. And they also had to ask the permission of the engineer as well in the engine room. Um, this was very much out of bounds to, to everybody in the mill. Um, we've had retired weavers that have come round who, like we said, I worked in the mill for 30, 40 years and I never, I never knew the boiler manual or the engineer. We, we, we were busy leaving. We just hadn't got that opportunity to, to tour as we have in the 21st century. We're seeing a lot more than some of the weavers would have done at the time that the mill was working. So when these were going, they would make all the, the weaving machines? Yes. Yeah. Um, what happens is that, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, water comes from the, the pond, mm -hmm. it's brought in by a steam pump, and then the water is uh, converted into steam, mm -hmm. and then the steam goes into the pipe to power, to power the engine. And I'll show you how the, the, the mechanism works from there, absolutely. Uh, I, I, on a previous visit, I had a, That's right, that's an inspector. Yeah, that's yeah. the steam going up yeah. into, the bar, into the engine room. You can see there, obviously, that uh, physically, a smaller people will better yeah. through it, as, as children had been. <coughs> the, uh, Right, I've just been told that these were the stables. He's going to tell us more in a minute. Okay, so you're at the minutes. Yes. Yeah, fine. Uh, these are stables. So what happened was, uh, take a Monday morning for example, the yarn that has been woven on by the afternoon will be put into boxes and put onto carts, and two of the four horses that were in the stables would take the cart down to Burnley. You saw them as, as money, not, not as uh, heritage. Um, one ex-engineer that came round, and again the engineer lived, would live in the village, when his mill closed and knew that they were coming in to demolish it. He had little marks in the flywheel there. Sometimes when the engine is stopped, it's not in the right position, counterbalance. Um, I've seen it with, on the Heritage Railway once um, where the engine driver had to rock the engine, steam engine, to get the pistons and the connecting rods just in the right position to move off. I've never seen it before, I never remember seeing it as a kid when I vaguely remember the steam, steam engine. Uh, originally it would be done by hand with a large bar um, just to move the flywheel a few inches. To get it so that it's balanced with, with the connecting rod and get the power out of it. But this is this is a more up to date replacement which will be powered by steam. And that's what that's for there to open it up to let the steam in. So just move that wheel. It, it would stop at lunchtime, stop in the evenings, start the following morning. So it's stopping and starting over, over a, a, a five day period. So it has to be here. Uh, have the facility to be able to do that. We have a steam engine turning the pipes. I 
Marvel said it was uh, it was almost possible to make it too. down here at the bottom. So we're going to stand with stars. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what they wind up. You need Kelcho. You need Kelcho mill, no. Well that's where they spin them, they spin them onto them, call them, yeah. And that, the yeah. whole box. So, go. And a lot of people on tour said, ridiculous all this process of sorting all this out to take it from one end to another to another. Into the shuttle, but of course, different mills had different size shuttles. So, this was the standard size, and for a Queen's Street mill, it won't work. They won't fit in anyhow, because you no. know, for spin, they're, they're, when, they, when they come from spinning, mm. that's how they are, they spun off onto them. Onto them, they, they call them a cop, and then we're a burn. Yeah. So, they have to wind this off onto cones. Now, in old, when Victorian time, we went on that, the sat with the belt driven, that would run off cops to burns. It's really set up for it, direct, you know, Yeah, way. but it would take me for so much trouble. It was a lot better wind when it comes to cones, and then cones off the road. That's about 1940. It's about 1940, so we'll see. And then we'll see how. It'd be just after war that. Yeah. But one winder would be running, that would be up to here, about up to here. There'd be two here on it. Uh, two winders going around the old Vegas. Because it breaks a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. just,
I've not been in here. Jack Arv. Jack Arv Loom. Apart from the waste of the room uh, in the wheel of the shed, hence the ground floor, there's also advantages around the roof. And you see that a dog shot to the back. Well, one side is glass, facing the north, so the north of northern light, and then from the side being tiled. And that was to allow uh, light, as you can see, it's very north. Jackard loom. And there's the pattern, and that turns that. And there they are. Is this a jackard? Of course, you'd have a little boy up there when they were first invented. And that's the sort of thing you can weave. Yeah. That would How old's this one? Well, I'm different from the 1880s. 1880s. They here from the the This is one of our these
Yeah. One full shot. So that's uh, for one full one. One bit there, so roughly it's about 15 inches. And it's uh, just less than two minutes. And that can serve that one. So that, that one used to show you. And that was going up to 19 inches. This is another jacquard loom, well, jacquard style, and that's the pattern that makes this tolling. Okay. And by the 20th century, we got the idea of more than one shuttle. Because mm. you need different shuttles with different colours in, yeah. in the turns. So, again, that's part of the, the process. It's circulating the air, gets the run. And if I was talking about kissing the shuttle, um, that was another contribution to cancer, as was kissing the shuttle. Um, it was the industrialist in Manchester who before that Right, I wanted, uh, before I said that I was going to have a tour and I'll explain you to you what this is. It's a sizing machine. It had hot tallow in these drums here that came through this hopper and sprayed onto the uh, warp and that strengthens it. Then this is full of steam and that dries it and then it comes out at this end ready to go on the loom now look at that there's two there there's two of them now that process a very very small process in the uh, in the factory and look at the size of the machines quite amazing so it goes comes off these it goes under and then it does a figure of eight down there quite amazing and that process could never be stopped so they had a steam engineer on these blocks so when it was dinner time and the steam engines shut down through there up there um, they could run this this machine and, and the one next to it I should imagine um, um, while, while that was off right this uh, this just puts this just put, this just takes it off them and puts it on there and some sort of automatic arrangement just there these are all the same aren't they that they all do the same job but a different machine Different, different style. This is the shuttle workers uh, work, workshop. That big one there is for carpets. This thing will possibly be in a showroom, but this is the lathe that you make your shuttles on. And here's some reeds, and this is the machine that makes the reeds. There's the frame, oh that's wood. 
That's wood, that. Right, so the process is, this is uh, the wood that's uh, used to make the shuttles. Uh, and there's the process. Starting at the top. Right, this is indeed the warehouse. Uh, that machine's been plonked there. Because it's a museum. And uh, we've shown you in there. And everything. And we've been in there. Yeah, that's about it, really. Welcome to a Zoom loom. Sorry, the camera's out of order. Oh well. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's there, is he? Mr. receiving his money. Is he asking for his money? There's a, a, a barrel that have, have beeswax in it to uh, uh, wax the wooden bob bobbins when they come off the lathe uh, so they don't snag the thread. These up here all belong on top of these looms in here. Can you see these things here? Them there in the middle of the shot. Those are there. Those are hung up in there. And the fella said that it they've been left there. That's exactly as it was when they when the um when it was shut. So these would be re they'd be all be recycled to put these. Whatever they're called. Right. Oh the steam engine, yes. I need to correct a few things. Well one main thing in there, it's not a tandem because that means there's two engines. It's a, uh, it's a, what is it, a compound, it's a compound because the steam's used, used twice, right. There you go, compound. What's this set up here? Some fire, some fire going on. Well, I've loved it. I don't know if you would, but uh, come along, it's brilliant. Only a fiver.